Let's hypothesize what the silver price would be directly based on the physical silver market. Today, the actual size of the silver market according to Bloomberg is $5 trillion. $5 trillion divided by $20 billion, which is the physical market, equals 250. 250 times 20, which is silver spot price, equals $5,000 an ounce. Hey, what's up, Silver Stackers? Thank you for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I really wanted to make this video so my audience doesn't have an unrealistic expectation on what silver's price could do and how soon. When I first started stacking in 2014, 2015, especially when I got into the, uh, to the YouTube stacking community, I watched a lot of videos of people saying silver's price is going to explode you know, in a couple of months. And that was really dangerous for me to, to watch and, and to believe because that was influencing me to be impulsively spending a lot more money than I was able to. I wasn't able to budget because I kept thinking in the back of my head, oh, silver's going to explode tomorrow. Silver's, I'm, I'm going to miss the boat. Silver's about to be $500 next month. I realized over the years that that's not really the case, that we do have time now, yes, silver will hit triple digits eventually. I say by the year 2025. But if you're someone investing as if silver's going to hit triple digits in a couple of months, maybe six months, you could see how that strategy or that person's game plan is going to be much different than someone who's thinking is going to hit triple digits, um, you know, in three to four years. Now, it's not only the case of missing the boat for the price. But also, and this is the most important in my opinion, how much silver is left on the shelves. See, you could miss the boat with the price. Yes, maybe you hold off too long or, or maybe you're someone that, that is going to find silver when it's already triple digits. You know, so a lot of people, I'm sure most people who are buying silver are going to find out about it once it's already exploded, once mainstream media catches a hold. You know, we're before the curve, but... I'm sure there's going to be a lot more stackers in the future that did miss the boat. Regardless, though, what if you miss the boat in terms of how much silver is left? I mean, local coin shops are damn near out of silver. Even bullion dealers are having an extremely hard time finding silver nowadays. So we could look at that perspective as well. And I think that could be a more realistic perspective to if you want to consider, quote unquote, missing the boat. I did want to make this video, though. To let people know you could pump the brakes. You could miss a couple paychecks and not buy silver and you could be perfectly okay. But, I, I remember, I'm, I'm not a financial advisor that's an expertise uh, licensed. You know, this is just my opinion and um, I could be completely wrong. Maybe something, maybe a wrench gets thrown in. Maybe something huge happens, a global reset or the COMEX collapses, as we'll talk about in this article. And uh, silver does hit triple digits in, a, in six months to a year. It's highly unlikely, but I'm just saying that it could. And I, I'm curious of what you guys think. When do you think silver's going to hit triple digits? I have my reasons why I say 2025. I'm not just saying a random number, picking it out of a hat. There's my reasons, but obviously any price prediction you cannot take very serious because the unknown variables are the most important. I'm sure there's going to be a, a, some crazy stuff happening in the next couple of years that could make me change my mind on that, on that time frame dramatically. Right now, though, just looking at the given circumstances, that's my best guess. But anyways, uh, what do you think? When do you think silver is going to hit triple digits? We're going to talk about the case for $5,000 silver. Yes, $5,000. And I like this article. Some people could say, and I'm sure this is where a lot of um, these unrealistic prices come from, is or the, the time frame for these unrealistic prices, is uh, silver pumpers. People that are hyping it up, over-dramatizing the... the 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 you know the, the the price of silver way too soon way too soon 
And that's the that's kind of the rabbit hole I fell into when I first started stacking. And I wish I would have seen a channel like mine that was telling me, hey, you know, silver's not going to explode tomorrow. You can budget. Maybe just spend, you know, 15% of your paycheck. Or maybe just buy, you know, 10 ounces a month or something. Instead of, you know, 100 ounces that I couldn't afford at that time. And that's another thing. Just because I could buy something doesn't mean I can afford to buy it. That's a very important lesson that I learned over the years. Just because I can buy something doesn't mean I can afford to buy that thing. Regardless, though, this I love this article because it goes over an actual mathematic equation that's very, very realistic to $5,000 an ounce. And when we talk about the COMEX collapsing, this could actually be something that falls into play. Not saying that, and like this guy says, he's not saying the price will hit $5,000. But technically, if you use this mathematic equation, this would be somewhat accurate. And I think a lot more accurate than people realize. It's the 250 to 1 ratio. The paper market compared to the physical market is 250 times bigger. So the, the physical market is 250 times bigger than the, the physical market. So if you multiply 250 times spot price, that would give you $5,000 an ounce. So technically, if you want an even paper market to physical market, that would put silver at $5,000. We do talk about the COMEX collapsing a lot. Uh, you know, LBMA and COMEX vaults are empty. What's going to happen when people try to turn in those contracts to physical delivery and the, 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 the physical silver isn't there to be delivered? So anyways, let's, let's go over this article. I wanted to bring the, the little bit of awareness and a little bit of a buyer beware. Because remember, I'm focusing more on the, the shelf life of silver, not so much the price. I think we will run out of silver before, before you miss the boat in terms of the price exploding and having to pay $100 instead of $20. If the price of silver were based directly on the real physical silver market, silver's price should be $5,000 an ounce. I'm not saying the price of silver will reach $5,000 an ounce. I'm just saying that the, the, the actual physical silver spot price is not only extremely undervalued, it's an illusion compared to the real value of an ounce of physical silver, since it's totally disconnected from reality. And it really is, you know, when you look at, at something like this or look at the paper market versus the physical, it is completely detached from reality. And I do think that there will be a day and age where silver's, physical silver's actual price or even spot price will start to, um, it, it will start to normalize to some extent at least. You know, the facade can't live on forever. Uh, the truth will be exposed. So a price of $5,000 may seem totally crazy, but who can pretend knowing exactly how an ounce of silver is worth? After decades of manipulation and turning real investors' demand from physical uh, to the paper market and years of exponential monetary printing by all the planet's central banks. And that is true. And, and even more so, how can you compare an ounce of silver to a dollar when the dollar is is inevitably collapsing. It's lost 98% of its purchasing power. You're talking about an ounce of silver that's always going to hold an ounce of silver. Comparing that price to something that is, that, that's collapsing, right? That, that's constantly collapsing. I mean, how can you compare that? You, can, you can't compare fake money to real money. No matter who says that one ounce coin is worth what is irrelevant because the coin's value is the one ounce inside of it, not the price tag attached to it. So you can't really compare it. What you can do, though, is look at the paper, the paper market versus the physical. And a great way to, to really show the importance of owning physical silver is this. Since the paper market is 250 times greater or that is the that is i guess the comparison between the two that means that every ounce of silver you have in your safe 250 people theoretically own that same ounce on the comex they think they own that ounce but they don't own it the only person that actually owns that ounce is you because you're the one that has it in your bare hand if you can't hold it you don't own it 
physical market versus the paper market difference. The actual spot price for silver has no real value and is not legitimate when we seriously compare the real physical silver market to the paper market. And, uh, and that makes so much sense. Spot price is irrelevant. Spot price has no real value because, once again, you're comparing silver to dollars. So an article by Bloomberg, which has always been a reliable source with their published data, says the size of the global annual silver market is equal to $5 trillion. According to a recent interview with David Morgan, the annual physical silver production is roughly 1 billion ounces, which it is, right? We actually, it's around 900 million ounces, something along those lines. I think it's 850 recently. But regardless, that's, that, those are the numbers we'll go by. So with silver trading around $20 currently, this represents $20 billion market for physical silver. So the size of the physical silver market is $20 billion. So the difference between $5 trillion and $20 billion is that Bloomberg's $5 trillion number represents the entirety of the paper silver market, including all paper financial products, certificates, options, ETFs, etc., derived from the real physical market that allows investors to be exposed to silver. So that means it's the 250 to 1 leverage. So what he was just mentioning makes for a 250 to 1 ratio between the paper market and the physical market, meaning that for every one ounce of silver, there are 250 ounces of paper silver circulating in several financial products. In other words, only one contract or certificate issued out of 250 could be convertible into physical silver. That is, the silver market being leveraged 250 to 1. And then the multiplication of those um, skirted investors' demand from the real physical market, thus creating a virtual supply of silver without putting any pressure on the physical market. A roundabout way of keeping the price low, right? Because they're still accounting for the price as 1 to 1 when it's actually 250 to 1. If now, as the regulation agencies are claiming, the goal is to create a new fixing for silver that would better reflect the physical market, notably from pressure coming from countries like China wishing to have their say in the fixing of precious metals prices. The leverage between paper silver and physical silver is at risk of radically evolving. So let's hypothesize what the silver price would be directly based on the physical silver market. Today, the actual size of the silver market, according to Bloomberg, is $5 trillion dollars. 5 trillion divided by 20 billion, the physical market is 250. 250 times 20, which is silver spot price, equals $5,000 an ounce. Here's the conclusion. Every investor holding silver in the form of financial products without the possibility of verifying the physical existence of their investment should ask the question as to what will happen when more holders of said products will ask for physical delivery. We already know what will happen because one of the largest banks from the Netherlands already defaulted a little more than a year ago on its gold certificates by settling customers in cash. And that's exactly what would happen, um, something along those lines. But we already know that the, uh, you know, the feds, every, they're doing everything in their power to try to not only manipulate the market, but keep this facade up of the COMEX, the SLV, PSLV. We know that the LBMA vaults are empty. The COMEX vaults are empty. Um, and that is something that is not a myth, it's not a conspiracy that was validated by them, themselves. So what's going to happen when these people try to turn in these contracts to physical delivery when the silver cannot be delivered because there is not a, a, an equivalent ratio of paper contracts to physical ounces? That's when everything gets exposed, when it comes crumbling down. That's when that 250 to 1 leverage gets exposed. So who knows what could actually happen. A, a prime example of this happening was with the Hunt brothers. The Hunt brothers owned up to 77% of all the silver in the world on the COMEX, and they tried to turn those contracts into physical delivery. They tried to turn in 77% of the silver on the COMEX into physical delivery. That would have exposed, that would have collapsed the COMEX right then because there wasn't that much silver, physical silver, for them to turn in. So the government had to ban silver on the COMEX. It literally banned silver. It was called Silver Rule 7. And during that time of when they owned 77% trying to turn those contracts in, silver's price was $50. The highest price silver's ever been still till this day.
That was literally the highest price. In 2011, silver was like $49. But when the COMEX was about to collapse, when the Hunt brothers owned all that silver and tried to turn it into physical delivery, that was when silver was $50, the highest price still till this day it's ever been throughout history, was a situation similar to what we're reading right here. So anyways, anyways, I wanted to kind of dive into... Um, what I was mentioning, you know, the, the reality, the reality of silver when we're, when we're talking about triple digits, quadruple digits, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's not something that should happen overnight. If silver were to hit a hundred dollars, uh, in six months, there would be a major collapse happening soon after. And that's because there would be no price stability being built up. Silver needs to take time to build up. Go to $20, and then $30, and then back to $25, and then go to $35, and then go to $26, or, you know, $27, and then go to $37, and then go down to $32, and then go to $45, and then go down to $40, then go up to $50, and then down to $45 again. It needs to go up a little bit, down a little bit, up a little more. That's how you build price stability. So when it does correct, it stays at those 40 levels. If it goes from, like the Hunt Brothers, goes from like $9 to $50, there's no stable pricing in between that. So when it does correct, when it's in that overbought territory, when there is a top, it's going to go right back down to where it started. If it would have went from nine dollars to twenty to you know to thirty, stayed at thirty for a while to forties, it would have stayed at fifty. But it went directly up, directly up, skyrocketed up, straight line instead of a slow, gradual hill. Both times, right? Same thing with Bitcoin in twenty sixteen. It went from like eighteen hundred dollars to eighteen thousand dollars in a matter of like six months, and that's why it. It collapsed, and it took three, four years for it to recover. If it would have went from eighteen hundred to eighteen thousand dollars a lot slower, it would have stabilized. There would have been stability at those in between prices. So, anyways, yeah, I don't want silver to to explode anytime soon. Anyways, it just gives me opportunity to buy more silver for cheaper for longer. If I'm not planning on selling for 10, 15, 20 years, then why in the world would I want the price to go up now? Only because I would need validation or confirmation that the price can. But I don't need to know it can. I already know it will, and I already know it can. If you think that $20 is too pricey for an ounce of silver, if you think the $30, $40, $50 is too pricey for an ounce of silver, you shouldn't be investing into it. Because that means, one, you don't know the true value of silver, and B, even more importantly, you don't know the true value of a dollar. So yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. Um, I did want to mention I am doing the giveaway very, very soon. Very soon. Next week, actually. So stay tuned. If you haven't entered yet, you might want to go do that because this is your last chance, last couple days. Also, also, if you want to buy silver... I got you guys. Send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Miles Franklin is the bullion dealer. They still can buy through the U.S. Mint. Wait, Silver Slayer, the U.S. Mint banned everyone from buying from them. They cut everyone off. Well, yeah, they did. They cut the public off and all these dealers, but there are still a few authorized dealers that can buy through and work with the U.S. Mint. And Miles Franklin is one of those companies. So all you have to do is send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Let them know Silver Slayer sent you. They will match any price, any price lower than theirs. Just send a screenshot or a picture. I don't, I mean, they already have like the lowest prices, but if somewhere else does have a lower price, send it and they will match it. So you literally cannot buy silver from a place cheaper than theirs. Uh, and, and just let, let them know Silver Slayer sent you. Andy would love to hear that as well. So yeah, I can offer you that. Very beneficial to build a relationship purchasing through them since they can they they can find silver that these other companies cannot. You know, even Robert Kiyosaki, I was on his show, the Rich Dad Radio show the other day, 
he was saying his bullying dealer he's been buying from for for decades his bullying dealer can't find silver anymore but andy can he even mentioned that on the radio so talking to me he's like andy Sheckman can still find silver but my dealer can't find silver anymore it's like yeah that's because andy is is the goat <laughs> Andy can pull off stuff that nobody else in the world can. Pulled off a $50 million deal. Found 900,000 eagles in a matter of two days. Nobody else in the world, probably literally nobody else in the world could have pulled that off. And that's because Andy has connections that nobody else has. So anyways, yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thanks for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.